This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. Despite a few hiccups like needing to recount 30,000 ballots in Milwaukee, the Wisconsin Election Commission says Tuesday's election was safe and secure with no major issues reported. On Wednesday, WEC officials reminded residents that the election is technically not over, as the official results still need to be verified and certified through the canvassing process. The numbers residents see now are unofficial results with votes that have been counted but not verified and certified. The deadline for the chairperson to certify the election is December 1st. Tuesday's election saw the highest number of voters in Wisconsin state history. According to the unofficial results, about 3.4 million people cast a ballot in the 2024 presidential race. That's equivalent to about 72.6% of eligible voters in the state, which is also one of the highest voter participation rates in state history. About 30,000 fewer people voted in the Senate race between Senator Tammy Baldwin, who won re-election, and her Republican challenger Eric Hovde. The final official numbers will be released on December 1st. Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin has officially won a third term in Washington. Senator Baldwin declared victory early Wednesday, while results showed she had a lead of less than 1%, which could lead to a recount. After the race was called by the Associated Press, Republican challenger Eric Hovde did not concede or say if he would be requesting a recount within the 1% margin. In narrowly winning re-election, Senator Baldwin kept a critical Senate seat for Democrats, while former President Trump won the state. Wisconsin residents voted to pass a constitutional amendment stating that only United States citizens can vote in elections. The amendment slightly changes the language used in current law, making it only a United States citizen instead of every United States citizen. Republicans across the country have pushed similar measures to prevent non-citizens from voting, which is already illegal. A handful of municipalities across the country allow non-citizens to vote in some local elections, like a school board. None are in Wisconsin. Eau Claire residents voted to approve a massive school referendum on Tuesday. The operational referendum asked residents to allow the district to exceed its revenue limit by $18 million each year for the next four years. The increase would add an extra property tax total of $100 per $100,000 of property value each year. School district residents voted to approve the referendum with about 64% of the vote. The Eau Claire area school district is among many in Wisconsin that proposed a ballot referendum. The Healthcare Workforce Training Institute in Chippewa County will offer free CPR and AED certification thanks to grant funding. The Community Foundation of Chippewa County received a nearly $27,000 grant for the program, which will see the Institute offer over 20 training sessions for free. Officials are hoping the program will improve survival rates for rural patients who may not have quick access to the health care they need. The first session will be held in early December and a full schedule and registration is available online. A Chippewa Falls community staple will soon be closing its doors. This week, Molson Coors announced that Leinenkugel's Brewery in Chippewa Falls will be closed and production will be moved to the company's Milwaukee facility. According to a statement, the popular Liney Lodge and Pilot Brewery will remain open, but the production will be fully transitioned. The Milwaukee facility already produces more than 75% of Leinenkugel's stock. Community members say they're shocked and upset that the historic brewery will be closing. The town of Wheaton held a ribbon-cutting ceremony to celebrate the opening of a free water refill station this week. Officials say the groundwater in Chippewa County has seen an increase in nitrates, so the Chippewa County Land Conservation and Forest Management Department has been looking for ways to prevent further contamination and provide clean water options. The water refill station is among those projects, with freeze-resistant infrastructure so it can be used year-round. The organization is also giving out free bottles to be used at the station. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. It's the Bucks and the Jazz. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Bucks and the Utah Jazz face off tonight in Milwaukee. Both teams struggling with one and six records. Is there pressure to finally snap the six-game losing streak? Doc Rivers. No, we're, we're, this is a positive group. Like We believe we're a really good basketball team that has played 
poorly. You know, last two games, you can say we played well and lost the games. The Boys and Girls State High School Volleyball Tournament is underway in Green Bay. The boys' final for the state title is tomorrow night at 7.30, Saturday night for the girls. NFL, linebacker Preston Smith on why the Packers traded him to the Steelers. Um, to be honest, a few weeks ago, I requested a trade. I didn't feel like I was being useful in the system, and I, it wasn't catering to my play style. And moving forward, like, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised when I got the call. It's like, you know, I got what I asked for, and I'm at a great place with some great teammates. And, you know, I'm excited for the new start, and I'm excited for the rest of this journey for this season. That's Steelers linebacker Preston Smith with Sports on Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. If you're looking for some post-election escapism, check out Apple TV's Slow Horses. The show follows a bunch of ragtag, disgraced MI5 operatives led by Gary Oldman. Oldman is a disgusting, disheveled, gaseous curmudgeon, but a very nuanced character. I'm late to the party myself, having just gotten halfway through season one. But it is very entertaining, and I love when I find a show where I have multiple seasons ahead of me for some serious TV binge-watching. Over the last few years, people have been talking about films as content. That's a filthy word. It's not content, it's bleeping work. Those are the words of Paul Meskel, the star of Gladiator 2. Meskel says he does not like when the artistry of good cinema and movie making, which takes time and effort and lots of patience, is compared to an Instagram post. I don't totally disagree, but you can judge for yourself as Gladiator 2 opens November 15th. Unlike with social media content, you will need an attention span. According to Yahoo News, Michael Jackson got into a fight with Tupac Shakur when he came to the defense of Kadita Jones, daughter of recently deceased music icon Quincy Jones. Sources say Jackson was present when Tupac, who was dating Kadita, called her the B-word. Jackson, who was like an uncle to Kadita, had words with Tupac, then the two squared off and supposedly Jackson got the better of him. It's unclear whether or not it was a dance-off. During an interview on Conan O'Brien's podcast, beloved actor Tom Hanks dropped one of George Carlin's seven words you can't say on TV. Hanks used the fifth word in the seven-word sequence, well worth a Google, when referring to a critic who panned his new film, Here. Hanks added that the same critic panned his directorial debut years ago, That Thing You Do, and just a few months ago called it a cult classic. Hanks did have a lighthearted tone when he dropped the CS bomb to Conan and said, that's what we signed up for. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. A little patchy fog or some low clouds this morning, but we will clear out. It'll be mostly sunny later this morning into this afternoon with a high in the low 50s today. Tonight, clear with a low in the mid-30s. Tomorrow, lots of sunshine with a high in the mid to upper 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Right now, it's 39. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WCFW.FM or thetap.FM. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 